Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Episode 23. Episode 23. 23 of your Kid Ass Valley Sports Talk podcast. I am Eric Sorensen, joined here by Luke Olson and John Goodat. Uh, fellas, I am super pumped. I could not wait to record this week. For the YouTubers on there, you're noticing there's a little bit different setup in this thing. Uh, we got the new table set up. Get on YouTube if you're not listening. Check this thing out. We are getting even this a little bit touch more uh, official here. Huh? A little bit more official and also... You, what you talk about watching this on uh, watching us on YouTube? You should have put the building of this on YouTube. The, the manufacturing of, of this on YouTube. Done that. There's a lot of cuss words. There's a lot of snap <laughs> fingers. Uh, it was made in Big Country uh, Woodshop near Big Country Studios. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know it was a lot of it was a, actually I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing this and I'm pumped and uh, it's a little more ergonomical. It's a great word. Wow. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, use that in an article this yeah, week. I'm going um, <laughs> brought to you by Country. Um, yeah, it doesn't look chaotic with all the, the cables everywhere. I'm pretty, yeah. pretty pumped about this. I think we're the big time. We're there. Yeah. Uh, are we really episode 23 already? So, obviously, the jersey number we're going to, oh, I mean, yeah. you got to talk about uh, MJ. Absolutely. The Michael Jordan episode because we just drained buckets left and right. Not LeBron. Mm. MJ. I'm MJ guy. Okay. I guess you were I the mean, younger generation sitting to our right here. Yeah, yeah. Which you <laughs> always old guys. Me. Yeah. Well, maybe you're just talking about him. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, LBJ is, I mean, obviously boy. he's the best of his generation, but MJ, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of draining buckets, the other reason, not just this new setup we got, why I'm so pumped about recording this week, and I was just ecstatic. The crowd was pathetic. I was ecstatic, and I'm going to do a little something here for you. I'm a little, uh, I have a new thing to hang up. we got lots of stuff back here. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Absolutely. You can't see that. Hopefully my fat head's not in the way, but uh, Western You Suck shirt goes up because Central annihilated the Western Washington Vikings on Saturday night. So I was out of town, but I watched kind of live stats, and I was texting you guys the entire time, but was it even in question? Never. No. Never. Nope. It was bad, or so I'm not going to cuss on the podcast, but it was badass. You can. You can. Yeah. We can't, it's, it's true. Uh, no, they they straight up, uh, when I was about halfway towards the end of the first half, I looked at my dad, who was with me that night, and I said, Dad, look at that bench. They're pissed. You can yeah. tell they were frustrated that what the hell's happening, look yeah. on their faces. It was awesome. But then about halfway through the second quarter, I saw the coach calm his team down and was like, hey, guys, we're, we got a lot of time to go win this game. And mm-hmm. they all were like, mm-hmm. I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> this is yeah. bad. But Central didn't let them get back into this thing. So that bench was pretty defeated, and that well, that means it's yeah, it's over. It was yeah. Eric could be a good writer. He's looking for the emotion, and he know. could be a good writer. I'm a terrible writer, a great brainstormer. <laughs> I'm a speaker, I'm an emotional speaker. Communication you could major. you right. could say the words, and we'll be your ghost writer. Yeah, then, or, you yeah, could be my editor of commas and periods and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, so if it's one of those things what we were talking about when before we were off the camera that mm-hmm. Central continues to play like that for the rest of the year, rest of the regular season. Yeah. Or if they would have continued if they were to play like that in December, January, we'd be looking at a different season. I I mean, I think you agreed already and I've probably asked you four times, but uh if Central played like that the entire season, they would be I think undef- close to undefeated if not ranked yeah. nationally. I wow. They played awesome, and it was just, and it was their their dribble drive, kick it back out, and they took smart shots defensively. They played tough, and Western just couldn't do anything. It was it was phenomenal, right? right. And they handled their uh, the big guy. He's like about seven foot, yeah, seven footer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was their part. Okay, so he was yeah. giant when we saw him on TV he when was I was giant. here at Big Country Living Room mm-hmm. watching uh, right. <laughs> the game. Sports, but nasty. he in live in person. He's legitimately seven feet, not basketball seven feet. He no, he looks pretty darn tall. He's a big dude. Okay, he's yeah. a big dude. And they put Kevin Baker on him. He did a pretty good job. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And that's where you'll be tonight. I'll be there tonight. We'll talk about it that's a little right. bit. But Montana State, well, they, and they knocked off. Northwest Nazarene on Tuesday night this yep. week. Yep, which is a one too. big yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. And so you're looking at Montana State Billings tonight. Need to win that one. I think Billings is, be, is they beat they beat Central in by a one over, point. Overtime. Yep. Yeah. Thank you got you. that? Oh, good. That was their worst loss, I think. Mm-hmm. I think they were up five with like 10 seconds. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Brutal. <laughs> yeah, it was. And they missed some free throws. And, yep. Yeah. They just need to ice the game, and then they couldn't ice it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, they, they so they, they need to get the dub tonight. But they go next week's a huge week because they go to the Alaska schools. Yep. They play at Fairbanks on Thursday. Hopefully the emotions of Fairbanks team ain't going to play like they did here. And, right. Uh, we already beat Anchorage, which is the better team of the two. Yeah. Beat you know what, though? I don't – I wouldn't – I mean, Coach Spar and Fairbanks, they're kind of rolling as well. They yeah. knocked off SPU, right. which was undefeated the in the GNAC. Lost. And then they're playing uh, – Fairbanks is playing – in Bellingham tonight, mm. so I mean, yeah, Ooh. Anchorage is you know usually the the better team, but as far as got them rolling in in GNAC play, their overall record is still below five hundred, but I think their GNAC record is pretty good, pretty darn good. Has Spar got his four hundredth win yet? Yeah, oh, he it did, did happen. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, hopefully, it's not against Sen- or yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be an incentive that'd be to yeah. I'm sure, he'd like to get. I'm sure he would feel good, <laughs> but. <laughs> He just wants to win. I wonder yeah. if the Western game means as much to him being a nana as a compared to a wildcat. I don't know. We'll have to get him on the podcast one day. Could probably sign the shirt. He wear it. <laughs> yeah. The the other shirt I had pulled out today uh, was not appropriate for the camera, so <laughs> I didn't bring it out. Okay. Yeah, but I'll show you guys later. Um. Yeah. No. Big week coming up. It's fun. Central basketball. Got to get out there. I, you know, it was very. You look online at the our Facebook. Luke's a Facebook, Twitter, start Twitter, not Facebook. Yeah. Uh, the crowd was quite pathetic. The volume of crowd. The people there for the Western crowd, game, or are you talking about Tuesday's game too? Both. My goodness. Both. That was bad. Yeah. I mean, they didn't need to put the upstairs out against Western. And that's, we got there 35 minutes early and I thought we were going to be late. That's where parking, when you I always, I'm not going to give my parking secret away, but where we'd park normally, when that's full, you know, this is going to be packed house. Yeah. There was nobody there when I got there. I thought, yeah. What? Maybe we're just that early, but we weren't. Yeah. Why? I don't I don't know. If they start winning more, I think it'll, yeah. it'll I think winning breeds it uh, brings it, but people are probably still pissed off about Spar mm-hmm. leaving. I mean, I'm sure that could you know, and if they did get somehow get on root sports, they, that it would have filled up, but a TV game fills that easily. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I mean, without a doubt, but I want to yeah. say the last time root sports was here was when uh Dom hit that three pointer. Yes, the, pretty much at the buzzer. So we remember. Yeah. And were you there? I was there. <laughs> I was there. See. I can still remember looking, watching it. Oh, it was chaos. And then we stopped them, and then the crowd just flooded the 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 floor. Wayne's or like the guy from Macklemore was there. T Wands, baby. T Wands, the Wings. Um, see, yeah. Um, I mean, that was a you crazy about game. That, one yet? Uh-uh. that guy was Central alumni. The guy that sings, "I want to pop some eggs." Oh, really? He's from yeah. Central. He was there. Uh-huh. And I, this wow. guy, I didn't even know that he was there. He's a writer. He's a podcaster. Did you, Singer. Did you hear that vibrato? <laughs> one, or if that's the right even word? Damn right. Wow. You're welcome. I usually charge for that. <laughs> uh, no, that this guy, I didn't even know who he was. When I got there, I was late that day because of dinner ran long. And, and, and people kept coming up to this guy's autograph. I was like, who's this dude? I'm, okay, cool. <laughs> and then when there was four minutes left, not to go back in too far, you know, we'll keep on track. But uh, when there was like four minutes left and the game was in question, and that dude came on the floor and sang that. Remember part of the, the song. media timeout? It was yeah, awesome. the media timeout, and the entire and student Jack section up. was doing this up and yeah. down. You could, I, I, I almost remember seeing the Western coach look over and go, "Yeah, yeah, a bad word." Yeah, and it happened. That started the momentum, and Central came back and three pointed to win the I game. Still That's on the that commercial. Game. Yeah, That's on the commercial for Central. Yeah. Um, I didn't get there early enough for this, but the girls' game that night, they went. Did they who were they playing? They played uh, MSUB. Yeah, MSUB. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yep. uh, he at Ellensburg grad, uh, Casty Malcolm had a pretty good game. Mm-hmm. Uh, pulled down thirteen boards and had fifteen points. Or, um, yeah, the girls are they played tonight as well. Yep. Um, and they're they're seven and five in conference, and I think they're sitting fourth in the GNAC standings. They've had some tough losses, games that I thought they should have won, but um, they should they should handle. I think they play Montana tonight, who are two and ten, and then uh, right. Then, then this Saturday, I should be there. Is uh, they play number eight Alaska Anchorage, which that'll be a big game for them. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we got a. a you know, well, let's mention, I wasn't, I wasn't on the roster. Unfortunately, it was nice because I got to watch a little bit of it. I paid for the one day to watch Central Baseball play at Stanislaus. I was going to ask about baseball and softball. So, yeah, what, tell me Stanislaus about Stanislaus didn't go so well. Yeah, they well, I saw three. the – I was watching the live stats a little bit. It was beautiful there, though. It was gorgeous. I kind of brought back some memories of playing there. I'm um, looking at actually the softball 
<clears throat> right now. I just pulled it up on the Google. And the uh, Google. <laughs> at the Desert Stinger, MSUB Desert Stinger. Cause yep. You, can't, you ain't playing in billions right now. No. Uh, it looks like they won three games, lost two. Yep. Then they went to Dixie State and played uh, Dixie State, and they split. They won one, lost one. So I'm assuming they must have stayed down there because on the sixth they play, which is today, they play a Dixie State tournament against Hawaii Hilo. Today. Actually, that Dang game goes. might actually be done by now. 11 a.m.? Sure. We'll bring this up. But, yeah, that was, that's a, it's kind of fun. Things are rolling. and uh, Things are rolling along. It's early February, so that means people are playing sports down south. Y- you made the comment, can you really believe there's baseball happening already? And I was like, guys, we're, we're weeks, not months, from high school baseball. And that's right. Starting, so. Which we should have a preview next week from somebody. That sounds we'll good. We'll see who shows up first. Phillips missed the driveway one time, so maybe he'll see if he'll show up for the second If we time. can get the kid at test baseball coach here on time, then he's hard. I think we're going to be. I hear he's a hard guy to get. Yeah. I agree. Not not an easy get for an yeah. interview. Um, but uh, signing day. Yesterday yeah. was a huge day for college football. I know just a brief blurb of the Cougs had a great day. That was, that was a lot of fun. Did they? That. Great day. Got a cornerback from, is it Kentwood? Right? Kentwood, Kent Lake, somewhere over there. Yeah. He flipped from ASU to, not ASU, University of Arizona, the Cougs. And it was a good day. They got a receiver out of Alabama late and a receiver out of Texas late that were studs. But, um, you were there last night. Then they have their big signing party for Central. Central had a great day. Yeah, yeah, they got some pretty good, uh, <coughs> pretty good kids. They uh, 27, 27, I think, and then five transfers, um, and twenty five of them of the freshmen are from the state of Washington. Um, yeah, they got some. They really focused on really defensively. You know, the last two years they really struggled stopping the run, and especially last year they nearly gave up about two hundred yards a game. That's tough. Um, mm-hmm. So they fixed one problem, and I guess, and got rid of their defensive coordinator. Yeah, uh, I saw that. Cordova. And then uh, they signed about seven seven defensive ends and seven linebackers. And, and obviously the big defensive, uh, at least the nose tackle, was uh, yeah. the guy at the Bellarmine Prep who, who signed with UW as a preferred walk-on that morning and then was thinking about it all day and – Decided to call uh, call the coach, recruiting co- eh, recruiting coordinator at a uh, central Leon and uh, yeah said, Leon yeah said he wanted to be a Wildcat and just like that he's uh he's he's gonna be at Central next year. Well, I I, I look forward to it. I, the, a couple of things that uh, came out of the signing is it just shows the that we don't have to go too far um, to get talent. I mean Washington is loaded. Are we at California or Texas or Florida? No, but. Um, the amount of talent that we can get in state is to me that that's absolutely huge. And then if we're, if we truly are competing against PAC 12 teams or, or definitely um, big sky teams for, for talent, that, that means that, uh, you know, are we going to get the five star recruits? No, but that the Bellarmine kid is a two star recruit. And yeah, I mean, that's a big deal. And in the article that you had in the, in the, in the daily record, He's a powerlifting champion. Um, yeah. Played with Christian Moore. Uh, sounds yeah. like when one, yeah, when yeah, one Moore year when he was a freshman, and Moore was a senior, I think. And yeah. and uh, man, if he's getting U Dub's attention as a PWO, then and Oregon, and Oregon, yeah. and Oregon, and then he had multiple D two scholarship offers too. So uh, that that's that's a big pickup. Not to take anything away from the the rest of the field, but man, oh man, Twitter was kind of blowing up. That was a good day yesterday. Yeah. And then one of the linebackers, one of their out of state guys is from, from Hawaii. Um, his last name is Emsley. Um, he's a three star recruit. And, uh, that was a big pickup too. He had an offer from San Diego state. Um, right. And then, but yeah, one of the things Chris Fisk really wanted to, he wanted to get a lot of length and yeah. And that, they got some six, six kid from Wenatchee and at least, Four of them. Four of them are six four. The Bellman kid's only six two, but he's three hundred pounds. Six two, three hundred pounds, and he's strong as a house. It's like yeah. I'm. I mean, it's like you're talking about Eric Sorensen, really. Yeah. So given. Yeah. <laughs> Just a given. But the the problem, the only problem that I have now is we got to wait forever for spring ball, mm. and then the time between spring ball and fall practices. Oh my goodness. I mean, there's more to life than football, but man, oh man, when you when you have such a great recruiting class, and uh, or you're you're thinking about the last couple of recruiting classes, and you just can't wait to see them on the field, we got to wait. 
shoot august is seven or six months away i don't i don't like waiting Mm -hmm. so but that's what we're just gonna have to do i think the other guy we have to talk about is the local real local guy the uh, ellsberg bryce messner yeah that was yeah that was i i didn't expect that i didn't I didn't hear that he had any offers, but um, after talking to him, he said he had a few Division three, and it sounded like he was really considering Eastern Oregon, um, but then I guess Central really liked what they saw at the, the summer camp Ellensburg attended, and uh, Chris said he was constantly putting pressure on the quarterback, and he earned like, defensive MVP of the camp, and yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so it's kind of cool to have a... I don't know how many... I knew... Uh, I mean, on the team last year, I don't think there was any local. I don't think there's any Ellensburg kids. I guess Nate and Dia was on the team, but quit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they had some linebacker from Ellensburg that was there. Can't remember his name. Hmm. But yeah, it's kind of cool. That's a awesome, local kid. Yeah. yeah, and the other guy that signed yesterday for Ellensburg was uh, Max Burnham. Burnham, mm-hmm. and he's going to play baseball at Williston State College in North Dakota. It's pretty cool. Bring a jacket. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> Good baseball back there, though. Yeah. So, exciting day to be a Wildcat. It is an exciting day to be exciting a Wildcat. Exciting day to, wa- to cover the Wildcats. And uh, are you guys proud alum right now? Absolutely. <laughs> I am a proud alum. Definitely. Uh, it's funny how life changes and how Western victory, post victories changes when you have a wife and a kid. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because instead of burning down the town, I came home and watched a good movie. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I didn't sleep that night. I was pumped. And I love a good Western Central come down to the last second thing, and and uh, I actually told your uh, your cohort cohort yeah. Yeah. in coaching, Mal Steuman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I walked out and I go, dude, I love a good Central Western nail biter, but they just kicked the crap out of, and I love that even more. And he's like, dude, they needed this. That's one. right. <laughs> so he probably had no idea who was talking to him, but <laughs> anyways, <laughs> that was good for me. Um, so, you know, we got some playoffs are starting for basketball. The, the, we talked a couple weeks ago to the Ellensburg or Clay Allen basketball coach, Eric Terrell, and he said one of their big goals this year, get to the district tournament. It's been a while. Yeah. And they're one win away. Yeah, he, he told me, I texted him yesterday just to kind of confirm. And, uh, yeah, he said if they win tomorrow, um, they'll be the fourth seed in the South, the SAC or SCAC, yeah, SCAC or whatever. Yeah. I guess, yeah. Um, yeah, top four. Top four in the West and East can move on to districts, and if they win, they'll be the four seed. Who are they playing on Friday? Gosh, I got to – he said they – yeah, I mean – Obviously, one, two is Zilla LaSalle. Mm-hmm. They play Highland. Ooh, oh, that's, that, a, that, that's a win. That's a win. They got that. Yeah. And, you know, that's a future matchup. That's a future for EWAC team E-WAC. for us. So yeah. Get some tape on them if you're a kid's ass guy. Anyway. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah, yeah, 730, they play it uh, – Cleon Roslin is what Max Preps is saying. Yeah. yeah. Home game for I him. I should be there. Yeah. Just see him. Absolutely. It's been a long time since they've made. I can't remember what Eric said, but it was. It's been time. a couple of years, we'll just say. Yeah. yeah. 2002 since or something like that. When Eric was. I mean, when John Held were you then? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, young guy over here. Wow. <laughs> Brutal. You were uh, the day two, the record. In 2002, to, cover, I man. was the slim and trim, lean and mean mm. daily record sports editor. Um, in 2001, I think they made state clown. I actually remember that. Yeah. Um, that was Dom, uh, Dom Coca was on the team, I believe. Um, that was, uh, and then um, no, he wasn't on the uh, team. Vince Gondo was their point mm-hmm. guard, if I remember correctly. I still remember watching him in the uh, in the Sun Dome. Yeah, mm. I'll tell my John covering stories another time. But there's some good. I have, I have a good story about when I was post game loss, and John called me down. <laughs> I'll tell that story another time. Um, but, no, good things to Cleom. Hopefully you get out of there with the dub. Yep. Um, and I guess this is an hour to kind of talk a little bit about our guest of the week, Ellensburg girls, girls coach, Jeff Whitney. Yep. And uh, they're a heck of a ride, and they head down to Sela to cap off a cap off an undefeated regular season. Mm-hmm. Right you know there. what, though? They – it was kind of nerve-wracking there, uh, that game, Toppenish, right? Oh, 40, yeah. Yeah. 645 or oh. 45 44 whatever it was um yeah, jeff said they shot like 12 percent <laughs> ouch uh, it wasn't that bad it was 13 so yeah, <laughs> yeah. It would be better um uh, yeah that's i mean it doesn't matter mm-hmm. An ugly win or close win is still a win absolutely so yeah. and the, yeah. where's the where's the boys team heading at 
They'll be at SELA as well. Yep. Yeah. And then they are going to be into district? They, I believe they're the seventh seed, regardless of when they lost. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, they've won last four out of five, so it's been – and they – I don't want to say they should have beat Toughness, but they were leading at the half and right there in the third quarter. And they just got outscored like 29 to 19 in the fourth. So that says a lot about that team being without, you know, they're a brand new team and they don't have, you know, Hunter Gibson would have been a key starter and he's gone. But, uh, yeah, they're yeah. missing a few guys. Pretty yeah, you know, it didn't turn out. Don't have Spencer. Yeah, David Spencer was not playing too. Yeah. But they still got. Him. A lot of guys coming back. I think that's. I look forward to seeing the it. program that Graham's. Uh, the Graham is, I guess you could say, rebuilding mm-hmm. or, or or adding on to. Um, when we're talking about district basketball, going back to the to the girls' the side of the bracket, I was uh, looking at the WIAA site, and it looks like the girls, them being the one seed, they're going to have a couple of extra days of break, which is kind of nice in mm-hmm. terms of. Just the bumps and bruises and exhaustion that comes with mid-February basketball, and and uh, so hopefully, when the time comes for that district bracket to to play out, that they'll be they'll be well rested. I'm of course getting ahead of myself, but I'm a coach, or I'm not a coach. I'm a talking head, <laughs> so I can, can I can look forward, uh, look uh, look look ahead, and um, tell you what, if we're going to talk about basketball, lean into K Town, get a task, yeah. beaten. Uh, Tri Cities Prep by one. Um, I think our our roving reporter was there. I went. I I hopped a ride. I got my thumb out there on the kid ass highway, and someone picked me up. <laughs> you know, it was awesome. <laughs> and uh, I got to ride down there with uh, Coach Phillips, and got to watch his daughter play in the the girls game that night. That didn't go so well for the girls. Yeah, uh, but his daughter's eighth grader and kind of up come, up and coming future yoke. And Tri Cities Prep is good. Their top ten team. So, Absolutely, yeah. it's a, probably a good thing that the one girl from last year transferred to Chiawana because. They really would have been damn good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But the boys game was fun to watch. Uh, I put a couple of videos up there. It was perfect timing. I was sitting there thinking, you know, I should probably record this. Yeah. As the boys were, uh, I, I thought it was a great timeout by Coach Weeks. Uh, kid has, you know, prep takes a lead and kid has comes back down the floor and they looked a little frantic and coach calls timeout and set up a play and they went up and scored. Yeah. And then just uh, some tough defense. I believe it was Catlin had that guy all the way down the court. And yep. Catlin made the shot too, I believe. The uh, Justin dished it off to him, set the yeah. screen, and Catlin came off his butt and made a made a great shot. And uh, I know I saw the Tri Cities prep. He, he's a good guy. He's a friend, and uh, we had a good talk. And I saw his tweet that night was uh, what a fun night of basketball. Yeah, uh, competitive. Everybody was there for all the right reasons, and they were they were there to support the kids. What's what it's about? So I actually I can't remember the tweet verbatim, but I remember mm-hmm. thinking he was applauding the 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 teams and and the crowd as well, which it was fun. That uh, that means we we travel well and we travel respectfully. So, um, big win and 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 the girls uh, the girls team like you said they they uh, took a, a moral victory I guess you could say. But they're they play a playing game. We're recording this on a on Thursday. They play tonight uh, at six o'clock tip off and um, they're taking off Lyle, uh, taking on Lyle Wisham mm-hmm. again as a playing game for the right to. Uh, Play yeah. in in the Granger the District tournament, EWAC tournament, yeah, the, the EWAC, EWAC tournament, tournament yeah. at Granger. Pardon me. Um, so I think the boys play at two thirty. That sounds like it's pretty set <clears> in Saturday. stone. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday, it's yeah. Liberty Christian, and yeah. that, that's a good draw for them. I, they, I believe they beat them. Beat we got them we we beat them twice. Um, but Liberty Christian's got that um, Graham is his name. Um, oh, it's that, like the, the yeah. top scorer of the entire Yakima Tri Cities Valley. Yeah. Um, and uh, so if we can kind of keep him in check, um, mm-hmm. because I think we beat them here by like single digits, but I think we beat them down there by 10, if I remember correctly. Yeah. It was a little bit more of a comfortable victory. So, um, you know, hopefully they, they do well. Absolutely. Got a few more days to practice it. Go get this, go get a, a shot at the district tournament and see where it goes from there. You yeah. never know. Yeah. Uh, as we wrap up this opening segment, we got, Let's see. We heard uh, uh, we did some googling, and we saw Kittitas wrestling district champs. I saw that on the Google, mm-hmm. and um, yeah. So let's tip our hat to uh, Connor Treat, mm-hmm. former state champion wrestler himself. That's right, and state champion uh, steer wrestler. He's so we're going way back in time there. But yeah. uh, coach of the year for the EWAC district uh, district uh, or league champions district champions as well. So 
regionals, I believe, is this weekend. I can't remember where that's at, but the grapplers doing well. And I think Ellsburg Wrestling and Cleo Wrestling districts are, are this weekend as well. Yep. Yep. Well, get out there. Get some watching in. There's lot, right. lots of games that happen, big games this weekend, whether you're tomorrow night or tonight in Kittitas, tomorrow you're either heading to Seal or Cleolum and, and some playoff games there and, and uh, get to Central tonight. Get out there and support the teams. Whatever teams you choose to support, Absolutely. support them. Go see Kittitas uh, girls win and then get your butt to Nicholson right afterwards. And, and uh, Exactly. We'll, uh, we'll bring on our guest of the week here. Uh, Luke and I are, got to interview him. We're going to go through a wardrobe change if you're watching on YouTube. <laughs> uh we recorded that yesterday. And John, uh, yeah. John was in here in spirit. We could have played it off that John just left and we changed. John said, I'm out. Had to go talk to his agent. Yeah. yeah. The, the Yankees were calling. And no, so, yeah. <laughs> to be quite honest with you, if we're, we're being open and honest, I we had to restructure my contract with the podcast, and so I needed uh, he was some in time a strike with my mode. agent. Yeah, yeah. It's crap. <laughs> Guy's head can't even fit through the door anymore. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, but this <laughs> is what I wanted. So the contract is it being works. honored. The uh, Kittitas Valley Sports Talk uh, memorabilia and official coffee mug uh, made by your better half. My wife, so, Paige. Yeah. She did a great yeah. job. It was Paige, awesome. thank you. Thanks, Pagey. And, and When uh, we post this up on uh, the Twitter and mm-hmm. the Facebook, maybe we should tag her for we'll tag her for the, the mugs. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I can um, give a new profile picture. That's, maybe that's what we do. Yeah. Yeah, get some get a new. We have to change it up every once in a while. Yep. Um, uh, guest of the week, Jeff Whitney, Ellensburg Girls Basketball Coach, brought to you by Fitter's Furniture. Which keep your eye out because in the next coming weeks, you're going to see three guys right here in the corner. Not right here, no, not right here. On the road in the corner window, Fourth and Main, Fitter's Furniture. Come down there. Maybe we'll get something to give away. Maybe we'll have a. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe we'll get something funny out there. Luke buys the couch. We give it away. Dang right. Wow. Thanks. <laughs> uh, free couch brought to you by Luke Olson. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, we're looking forward to doing that, and, and we'll see who we got a special guest for that week. But, uh, yeah, Fitters Furniture, thank you for sponsoring us again and being a part of the Kid That's Why Sports Talk. And go in there and tell them you appreciate it and buy something from them. That sounds good to and me. And then when you buy it, say, Kid That's Valley Sports Talk told me to come here. That's right. <laughs> And uh, anyways, uh, we'll be right back. We're going to give a a brief message from Fitter's Furniture with our guest of the week, Jeff Whitney. Is a new sofa calling your name this new year? Maybe a recliner? Whatever furniture needs replacing, when it comes to furniture upgrades, you can trust the professionals at Fitter's Furniture in Ellensburg. A knowledgeable sales staff, certified interior designers, and three floors of quality home furnishings are just some of what you'll get at Fitter's. Fitterers also offers in-house financing, free delivery, and Holloway in Central Washington. Fitterers Furniture, quality furniture since 1896. Fitterers. Well, welcome back, Kit House Valley Sports Talk fans. We are here with our guest of the week, brought to you by Fitterers Furniture. Coach, welcome to the podcast. We got Ellensburg High School girls basketball coach Jeff Whitney. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks. It's great to be invited. Heard a lot about this, so it's... It's cool to be a part of it. Absolutely. We're fortunate enough that we have you right in the middle of the season. Uh, you got one more game to go, but you're wrapping things up for the regular season, getting ready for that playoff push. But uh, before we get to that, talk about how the season's been going for you and, 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 and a special group of girls I think you have right now. Yeah, I was, you know, I was real fortunate before I got this job. I coached most of these girls in AAU. Mm-hmm. So, and I think that was a big reason, you know, to, to after being in retirement, as long as I was, I knew that kind of what we had coming in. And so, and I knew there were a couple of really good players on their current team. So I think once we knew we could put those two together, uh, I think we realized that, hey, something down the road here was, was going to be good. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we're just solid. We can defend um, offensively. We normally shoot the ball pretty well. Um, and I, I just think it's, uh, I think our couple of our kids said it best. They all get along. Mm-hmm. And I think in girls basketball, the, the ability for girls to get along on and off the court is it's enormous because 80% of girls' basketball teams implode. Mm. The 20% are the ones that are in state or in the national, you know, NCA or are playing later on because they all get along. Yeah. And but you also got to have the talent. So, no, but we've we've had a good season. We've uh, our bullseye has gotten bigger on our back. Each game we play, um, we're getting everybody's best game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, once you're up there in the RPI and you're undefeated, you know, I, you know, our girls, we have told them your bullseye every game gets bigger and bigger, and you better bring it. Mm-hmm. Um, like last night, you know, that right. was Toppenish brought it. Right. And and they, you know, I think our team learned a lesson. You know, we talked all 
for two weeks now. Hey, it's getting down to the crunch time now, and teams are going to get after you. So, mm -hmm. I think again, we've we've had a great, you know, we've got we've been great to this point, and but then the season here is going to start over in another week. So, right. uh, just trying to get our girls to understand that. Absolutely, and I mean, you came off a big victory last night against Top and Nation. And it looks like here coming up the, the last game of the season this week, Sela. That's I mean a fun rivalry game, big yeah. matchup coming up, and yeah, big big matchup. And I think you know we we beat Sela pretty handily here, mm -hmm. so I know their girls aren't, you know, they're not going to take too kindly <laughs> to that. Right. And um, yeah, it's, it's I didn't realize that the matchup was you know as as heated mm -hmm. as it was, and so it's uh, our girls take that game, you know, to heart. Yeah, and so I think uh, being it's our last game. I'm hoping that we go down there and execute and do the things we're capable of doing. Yeah. Um, we'll see. Right. You think, uh, I mean, obviously it's a one-point game. You think, you know, of, of late, you know, I mean, is that ad adversity kind of good for this team, would you say? Just kind of playing that close, you know, you guys have been kind of beating opponents pretty good. But. Yeah, because you can't, you can't practice special situations. You know, coaches like to say, well, you know, you should be practicing special late late game situations. You you can't do that to you really in a game. I mean, with the with the crowd and noise and and the pulse factor of your players, um, I think you have to have games like this. Now, do we like them as coaches? No, absolutely not. But again, it gives our chance. Like last night, we had probably six or seven different late game situations that we could not probably do in practice. Mm -hmm. So we use it as a learning tool to say, look at you know. Five times we had to do this. Why do we use our three timeouts? Why are we, you know, why are we changing up our defenses? Because in practice, you just don't get that intensity. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought last night was a good learning game for us. And to also let them know that anybody one through seven, one through eight can bring it night to night. And you better bring it. Right. And I think that's the thing we've talked about being intense and, and focus. Mm -hmm. And if we do those things, we're really good. If we don't, then... You're as good as the opponent that you play. So, right. Yeah. Does it feel good knowing, you know, however this season ends, that, you know, most of this team is still, I mean, you got three starters that are sophomores. And, yeah. I mean, does that feel good as far as the future of this program? Yeah, we're young. Yeah. Um, you know, losing Brinley is, that's a loss because um, she is just a self made point guard mm -hmm. and um, such a good leader and everybody respects her. And that's hard because you can't just make somebody respect. A player right. and they all listen to what she has to say so but again at when you look at the the big picture we've got a lot of young kids mm -hmm. I mean I got two kids on JV right now that probably could be on this year's varsity team yeah. so and they will yeah. make an impact next year so you know again we'll fill those spots and you know each year is different but yeah the future looks bright I I, I believe that mm -hmm. yeah is this something you've seen coming for a while I mean I know that you know I always watch the little league of the kid of tasks mm -hmm. and stuff, but I mean, is this something you kind of you can sit back and smile knowing what's about to come up through the oh yeah varsity program yeah because we've I I really make it a, a point to get out and watch you know our eighth graders our seventh graders and I've gotten all the way down to our fourth graders this year to meet the coaches mm -hmm. to talk to them about their kids and then to see what kids have that ceiling mm -hmm. you know you look at and you make your list and say hey and then you start watching these kids you get them to camp so that again you're getting to see the growth mm -hmm. so that you can you know. For as long as I want to stay, you want to see what kids, you know, can come in and, and you can continue the tradition that this group has started. Right. right. Yeah. And what, I mean, what have you seen out of Brindley this year? I mean, compared to just her, her leadership and. Well, it's funny taken. because her, the season started off with knee surgery. Yeah. You know, she had a plica surgery that had to be done that she had problems with this summer. Yeah. So that, that set her back probably three weeks. So, you know, a lot of people don't know that. And that's, she played through that and then had surgery and then came right back. Um, but, you know, the thing is, she's a leader. She plays so hard. Um, <clears throat> and again, our players just respect her. Yeah. And so if she says something out on the floor, it's, they're going to listen. Mm -hmm. And if they don't, they'll probably get chewed. Right. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my, my voice is a little oh, you're crazy good. from last night, you're screaming and yelling. 100%. But I think, you know, when you look at her game, you know, she's, when we talk to the recruiters, you know, she's a five, 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 six. Um, she's, she has the right amount of quickness. She shoots the ball extremely well. And again, she can get to the rim. She has an uncanny way of getting to the rim and either finding her, you know, either her cousin Dylan sitting on the right or Kaylin Smith on the left 
and getting them a shot. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's what good point guards do. And we've, we've told her she's got to take her shots because she's a real consistent shooter. So, I mean, just this past year that I've had her, she has grown each year. And, you know, now I believe that she's probably a recruitable athlete at this point. Where, where that's at, we don't know, but there are some schools looking at her, and she's self-made. She yeah. She's a kid who's in the gym nonstop. You know, the kid says, hey, on Sunday, hey, can I get in and shoot? You know, Summer's always doing something. Mm-hmm. And so when I mean self-made, I mean she is. Yeah. And so, you know, I hope she's able to go to a college and, and have a good career there because we've sure enjoyed her. At least my last two years, I've enjoyed her. Mm-hmm. Who do you kind of see stepping into that leadership role next year? Boy, <clears throat> that's a good one because we've had that conversation with coaches. Um, you know, we obviously would like to see Dylan and Kaylin uh, Smith step into those roles because, I mean, if we look at time, they've probably got the most experience. And then I think Cammy, because um, she's, you know, she is our silent leader, you know, and the people respect her as well. So it's going to be, that's going to be our venture, I think, starting in June with our summer ball is, is who's going to step into that role I mean, Riley Leishman, our freshman, is another one that's uh, very smart, highly intelligent, um, and I think she'll do a good job stepping in Brindley's shoes next year, but I don't know if the lead will come from her. Um, That's still kind of up in the air right now. I think we as coaches are going to wait to see through summer and fall ball. We hope somebody emerges because you can't just make somebody a leader. Right. You know, coaches say, well, that's going to be my leader. No, Your your players dictate who that is and then you you got to work through that person to get things done absolutely so what do you contribute you know i guess and this is a a question for me as a coach to you as a coach you know you talk about the your team likes each other and they get along in the leadership and what do you contribute that to is it just the the type of girls they are the friends they are is it stuff you guys are doing differently or well i i think that you know we've this year we've um after last season i sat down and said what what do we need to do better Mm -hmm. I said we need to probably do some more social functions because I think that's important for girls' basketball and also our mental training. Mm-hmm. So we've really um, – my wife comes in. She's, she's got a major in psychology, and she does all this team building. She's worked up at Central, mm-hmm. and she's working on their mental mindset. And, and that's about how do we treat each other? Mm-hmm. How do we go about um, – making sure that we're positive with each other. Mm -hmm. Because it's always easy to say, hey, you need to rebound, you need to defend. You know, how do you pick up your teammate? And and when do you see that teammate's down? Mm -hmm. And and I think that's really helped us just really take a better look at, besides Mm themselves, their teammates. How they're feeling. Um, You know, when someone's down, we always say someone's got to go pick them up. Mm -hmm. And that way, and that might be somebody, it might be a Dylan who's not having a great shooting night. Brinley's going to run over and say, hey, you got this. You're going to shoot the next one. Mm -hmm. And I think that mental training is just make them more self-aware. Because I think as young high school, again, I've been away from the high school game for seven years. I came quickly back. Mm -hmm. I I had to figure out these high school kids are different. And, you know, again, it's getting them to really care about their teammates Mm -hmm. and and treat them because at the end of the day, they got to have each other's back. Right. And so that's really what we've been working on this year. But I do think that a good core of them have been together. And Brinley has being cousins with Dylan has been with that group at whether, you know, they're going out to baseball games, football games. So the group has kind of been together for mm-hmm. probably the last three, four years. Oh, that's awesome. So talk about your summer program. I mean, you got obviously nowadays there's always gotta be summer play and whatnot now about this season. So what have you guys kind of done to your structure of that and keeping yeah. People together playing. Well, it, the way the way that the AAU, we have to structure ourselves around AAU because okay. they, they go April to July. Oh. And luckily now June, we, we've managed to carve out about three weeks in mm-hmm. there to have our kids because yeah. most of our kids are on some form of travel team. Yeah. So that's that's great. But no, we, we do individuals um, two to three times a week. Um, we're, we're trying to get four tournaments in that month of June. Mm-hmm. And then in July, we're back to working on just the basic fundamentals, mm-hmm. but we're also putting in yoga okay. and some of our mental conditioning All right. because we're going to have some new people coming in now right. so that by the time we start next fall, we don't want to have to be introducing all the mental mindset stuff that we're just kind of, mm-hmm. we're, we just flow into the season. But I think the summer is vital. I think that if you're not doing something in the summer with your team, then you're, you're missing out. And again, it's that non-stressful time for, 
for your players to get together. Mm-hmm. They're not necessarily competing for one another's spots at that point in time. And it's your time to go to a team camp to to instill what it is you expect. And and again, and I always ask them, what do you expect from the coaches? Mm-hmm. And what do you what do you expect from one another? And so that's kind of what our summer is about is we only get so much time. Mm-hmm. And so we have to do a lot in that little time. Right. Yeah. So obviously it looks like you guys are going to have, well, you will. You'll have two buys into districts. Yeah. What's how you're going to kind of prepare your team and from that little hiatus. Yeah. We, we've we gone out and we've found six guys that some of them play at EHS and a couple were EHS from last year. Mm-hmm. And two days a week we bring them in so they can press us. They're playing zones. We kind of look at who we're playing mm-hmm. the week before, and you know whether it's their zone team or man. I have them come in and they, they cover our passing lane. Just they're always two steps faster mm-hmm. than what we're used to playing. So the girls, it's taken them a while to adjust to that. But I've told them that every college in America for girls has managers that are five guys that play against their team mm-hmm. every day. Right. So I said you're only getting a small dose of it. Right. But I think mm-hmm. it's. It's good for our girls, all of our girls, to play against the guys. I think it's they understand there's some rules. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want them jumping seven feet in the air to block shots, right. but we want them <laughs> shooting the passing lane. We mm-hmm. want them applying ball pressure. We want them to have to make our girls uncomfortable right. because that's the only way you get better. Mm-hmm. Um, so really bringing, I think, bringing in the guys, and then we go back to the basics, our ball handling, our rebounding, um, our shooting, um, our conditioning. Um, I know that sounds cliche, but... In girls basketball, the fundamentals are number one, yeah. and, and and they can lose them just as quickly as they gain them. So that has to be consistent, and I think that's what we do pretty much every day. Yeah. As, for, as I don't know your high school, you know, coaching background, but this team, I mean, where does it compare to other teams you've had? Well, we I was fortunate <clears throat> enough. The two teams I had, I was at North Kitsap High School, oh. and we were a state runner up and a state champion, and I think fifth, oh, okay. so three. Mm-hmm. Um, this team is way more athletic yeah. um, we've got some really solid athletes we got four kids who can score um you know unfortunately for us in the in the two-way ranks this year there's there's seven to 16 teams that are really good because we saw some of them this summer mm-hmm. so we match up i think pretty well with them but um again each team's different mm-hmm. the makeup's different um you know back then the game was a lot different because again that was in 1986 85 86 the game has changed tremendously since then, you know. So when I said I was away from high school, <laughs> I was away a long time, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, <clears throat> you know, got more into the college game and, <clears throat> you know, and, and now got back to high school. So there's a lot of learning curve last year. It was a steep learning yeah. curve, you know, not necessarily the X's and the O's, but, you know, how, how to have 31 girls on your team versus the 15-year recruit, right? you know, and then all the parents. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's a fragile balance. Yeah. And so that's really what last year was about for me. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. And the athletes probably changed a little bit since when you're in high school last. They do. Today's, I mean, they're so much faster, right? Quicker. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they're training. Mm -hmm. You know, my kids, you know, in the eighties, they weren't doing that type of training. They were. They'd come to practice. Um, You know, they might go. They play in a summer league, maybe three weeks out of the summer. You wouldn't see them again until November. Right. You know, our kids are have the ball in their hand pretty much every day doing something mm-hmm. they're they're they've got strength coaches they've we've got some individual coaches that are doing nothing but ball handling and shooting and so that's what's different about the game it's so fast mm-hmm. and it's quick and you don't have time to think and so i think that's probably the biggest difference between you know probably the 80s and and where we're at now mm-hmm. it's it, the game is just it's advanced to a different level right yeah and you know you guys have you're known for that one three one defense right now. What's have you used that before in the past, whether in college or? Um, or? I, I used it. I used it my first year at Central. We we used it, but the the thing with college is is that they they've got really good ball handlers and really good shooters, and they can move the ball at a very quick rate of speed. So it's it's a little tougher to run that. Um, and again, you have to have the right personnel to run it. Yeah. And in high school, you run it because you've usually got three really good athletes and you've got some bigger kids that maybe might not have the foot speed, but that you can hide mm-hmm. in certain places. And in, that's kind of what we've done with this defense is it allows us to play more than five kids, you know, with, with foot speed. And it allows us to teams that can't handle the ball, makes them pass a lot. 
Yeah. And if you'll see the, a lot of moon balls mm -hmm. and that shot clock's getting down to three, two, one, and they're forcing a shot they don't want to take. Right. But now teams I can see are practicing, you know, the second time so, around. Yeah. Oh, you can tell. Mm -hmm. So we don't even, we, we try not to start off in it. You know, we're using our two, three zone, come out in some man. Right. And so, you know, it's, we run three different defenses mm -hmm. and that's the reason why we do it. Cause I know that they're all practicing for the one, three, one and, and it's well scouted. And so, you know, you have to be, you have to pick and choose your times to use it. Mm -hmm. And you just, you have to, you have to know the team you're playing and their, their ball handling, their passing capabilities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And just usually when another coach calls timeout, you usually switch it up right yeah. after. Don't yeah. You? Yeah. It's <laughs> always a switch. Cause I mean, he's going to diagram, he's going to stick somebody in a short corner. He's going to stick three up top. We've seen three down low. Mm -hmm. We've seen every imaginable variation to try to break that. So we're like, okay, we'll go 21 trap the corner mm -hmm. we'll go 21 and we're going to add some new things now come up for the playoffs that we didn't want on film so mm -hmm. you know it's we always keep teams guessing right and i think that's i think that's why we're where we're at right now is offensively we don't always control the ball going in the basket but if we can defend and rebound at a decent rate mm -hmm. it really offsets especially in high school girls basketball yeah and there's a freshman you got i know she only usually plays in the fourth quarters but olivia anderson I mean, she usually has, she's scoring eight. You know, the yep. other night she scored 12. I mean, yeah. And she can shoot the three. Yeah, she can. I mean, what can you tell us about her? Well, she's <laughs> she's a kid who started off as a guard and really? grew. She grew like, what was it? Her dad said eight inches. In one wow. year? Yeah, because watch the way she handles the ball. Yeah. She handles it and shoots the three. Because when I first met her, I was like, that's a long way up for you. Uh -huh. She said, oh, no, yeah. it's not. And Gross highly sports. athletic. Yeah. And she's... For her, it's gaining strength. We're gonna have to get her her strength built up and her um, just her stamina. But she's got all the other things. She can catch. She can shoot. She's gonna be a real special player. We're very fortunate to have her. And so we brought her up, and she'll be on our our tournament roster. And it may be that she she gets some time in certain situations, mm -hmm. especially when we start seeing some bigger posts that we can stick her behind and try to shoot over a seven. Seven eight wingspan that's right. just high Hopeful. up there. So yeah, she's uh -huh. seven. She, you know, she's yeah. Is, is she really six four? She's six four. Wow. And and they're saying still growing. Wow. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, I mean, do you see her in the lineup quite a bit next season? Oh yeah. Depending on how much oh, she matures. Yeah, yeah, she'll. Yeah, she will mm -hmm. take a prominent role next year. There's there's no doubt, and she'll be ready. Mm -hmm. I think she uh, she's playing on a select team. She'll go play this summer. You know, in some of the big tournaments. And I think she'll come back even better. And then she's gonna, yeah, she's gonna take a prominent role next year. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely see that. Yeah. And what's it been like having Dylan last two years? I mean, what can, what do you expect from her next season? Well, she, well, I mean, Dylan is so athletic, mm -hmm. and you know, everyone says, well, she can shoot, but she does a lot more than that. I mean, she passes. She, we stick her usually on the the best person, you know, best score and they usually won't touch the ball mm -hmm. or have a real rough night. And so she's that glue kid. She can do it all. And again, she's she's probably, we always say, she's even a better person than she is a player. And so she's a pleasure to coach, mm -hmm. and um, she's good to her teammates. And I think that her athleticism is the thing that when I first watched her as a seventh grader, I, I went, oh, who's that? Right. You know, because <laughs> you, you know, I'm down at the sub at CWU, and mm -hmm. I'm like, whoa. Who is this kid? Because mm -hmm. I knew I knew she's going to be special. Yeah. I mean, her her family's got lineage. Her dad was a football player at Central. Mom was track at Central. Okay, and then her little sister now is a seventh grader who is just like her yeah. <laughs> already. So, but Dylan is. We're lucky to have a Dylan um, because she just she sets the tone for us. Whatever defense we're in, she's positive, always positive with her teammates. And I think that again, that's kind of what we're trying to get to is we're, we're trying to be we're trying to work on our mental and we're trying to be positive mm -hmm. and i think that she exudes that and, and the people that watched her play see how good she is mm -hmm. so those are just some background into her right yeah and so just kind of for yourself what i mean what brought you back into high school coaching after seven years well i think you know when i left central after 14 years i was like i'm done mm -hmm. yeah that that was enough coaching and my daughter plays and she we put this aau team together they two teams merged and actually bo snow uh the principal at the high school was coaching 
the group when I think they were like sixth graders. Mm -hmm. And then he decided that he wasn't going to do it anymore. And I was working with him just, I was helping with individuals, you know, mm -hmm. I didn't have any plans on coaching. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Hey, I'm done. You know, you need to take them over because our, they're going to start tournaments here again in another month. Yeah. So I said, all right, you know, I asked the wife said, Hey, can I, yeah. can we get back into coaching again? Mm -hmm. Sure, as long as it doesn't dominate your life, right? You know, and because that's <laughs> oh, yeah. when you're in college, it's you're never home. Yeah. So that's why I had to get her okay. But I think it was knowing these kids. I like them. Mm -hmm. They're good kids. They're fun to be around. And I think that that made it a lot easier when the superintendent and them said, "Hey, you know, the high school job is going to open. Is this something?" Because I worked for the superintendent, mm -hmm. and you know, is this something you would think about doing? And I'm like, boy. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of work, a lot of, yeah. but then I'm thinking it's nowhere near the work that you have to do in college, mm -hmm. you know, but it's still, that's what brought me back with the girls, knowing the girls, I knew the core and I'd already kind of built a relationship with them mm -hmm. instead of just starting completely over. Cause that, that can sometimes take two, two years just to even get in that door, especially when you've had a coach that was there wet for nine to 10 years mm -hmm. and, and had success. So I think that's really what brought me back was just this group of girls and um, I think the love of the game again. Because mm -hmm. I think you don't coach unless it's for the love of the game in high school. Absolutely. You know, and I think that I lost that in college mm -hmm. because it's your job. It's a J-O-B. You yeah. know, you, you win or lose and three-year contracts and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I think after 14 years, it was like tired of recruiting, tired of living out of a suitcase, tired yeah. of eating at Arby's, you know, mm -hmm. bus trips, lit, you know. Yeah. But anyway, I think that's what brought me back is the love of the game and the girls. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that wraps things up for us today. And we truly appreciate you coming on and joining us. And if you guys are out there Friday night, they're at SELA. I'm seeing a 545 tip that's off. Correct. So get there. I know uh, it'd be pretty cool to see an Ellensburg student section that dominates the SELA student section. That, that would on, be uh, awesome. Friday night. So <laughs> love uh, to see our group there. K9s there, definitely. That's right. Represent. Well, thank you for joining us. Good luck on uh, the rest of the season and, and look forward to hopefully seeing a long state run for you guys. I, I hope so. Mm -hmm. Well, well, we'll be back after this message with uh, our Would You Rather, I believe, is what we got next. So right. we'll be right back. Access to moisture is arguably the number one factor limiting yields in our region. Hi, I'm Kat Salois, the Director of Research for the McGregor Company. Phosphorus is critical in developing deep fibrous roots, but largely ties up before ever reaching your plant. Imstruck by McGregor's protects and maximizes your phosphorus investment by keeping it more plant available longer. Imstruct improves nutrient efficiency, establishes larger roots earlier, and ultimately increases access to soil moisture. The results of Imstruct are striking, exclusively at McGregor's. Well, we're back after that interview with Ellensburg girls basketball coach Jeff Whitney. Uh, it was a fun interview. John, what do you think? Oh, wait, you weren't there. Never mind. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> He'll watch it here in a little bit. He'll be a part of it. Um, no, that was a lot of fun, and, and hopefully they uh, make a deep state run this year. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, I think they will. Mm -hmm. we'll I see. want the biggest trophy. That's, That's what, what we, we want. want. Yeah. A deep state run, but a big trophy as well. That gold ball. Bring yeah. it home. Yep. Okay, speaking about making a deep, deep run, and, and I'm, I don't know why we didn't even talk about it in the beginning, probably because I didn't make a note of it until later in my page, and I'm blind sometimes, and I miss <laughs> it. Um, John, I'm actually surprised that you're not talking kind of like this, because you were recently in Dallas. I was and recently in Dallas. Your southern slang stayed in the living room. Yep. So um, thank you for, people can understand, I'm, just, I'm joking. That's, that's <laughs> um, uh, no, uh, John Gates got back from Dallas. Uh, tell us about how it all ended. Dallas up. was fun. I tell you what, uh, the community, I, and I know that I said this in, in the check-in when I called in on whatever day it was, Sunday. The days are running together, but the community should be proud. Um, the school should be proud, parents and friends and family, but the community should be proud because I thought, Kittitas represented themselves and represented the community well. We finished 25th in our in our division, and there was, I'm not joking, there was thousands of cheerleaders there. We were in different, you know, levels and groups and performance types and everything like that, but really cool, um, intimidating if you let it, if you let yourself be intimidated, or on the flip side could be um, incredibly motivating as well. So uh, the girls did great. Um uh, I thought the little contingent of parents and friends that we had there were, were really fun. And, and uh, I should also say that, well, one, the girls did excellent, but another nice little fringe benefit was on Sunday it was 81 degrees in Dallas, Ooh. and that was wonderful. 
that was wonderful. So, and everybody was like, well, you know, it was kind of warm up here in Ellsburg too, but were you wearing shorts and a t-shirt and was the sun out and was it 81 degrees? <coughs> that's all I want to know. What no? Were you, what were you eating down there? Ooh, that's the... Barbecue and Tex-Mex, uh, Tex-Mex barbecue. Um, I will confirm the rumor that I made four different visits to, um, I was calling it Whataburger, but apparently it's called Whataburger, oh. um, which is a that? staple down there. I didn't know that either. Um, so lots of good stuff. Uh, did a little brisket, did a little Tex-Mex, uh, did a little pulled pork. Um, the Whataburger uh, double patty melt uh, is a favorite of mine now, <laughs> and um, just just a great trip, and I hope to be there again next year. That yeah. sounds delicious. Yeah, I want to go down there and eat. It is. It it really. I, you know, every time you, I travel somewhere, you want to get something that you can't get here. Obviously, we can get barbecue here and burgers and even Mexican food, but you want to just try something a little bit different. And definitely, everything I. I like food and I like trying new things and that's what I did. It was delicious. I have a new reality TV show idea that we can film next year, Luke. What's that? He's going to be the star. <laughs> Diva Dads of Cheerleading. <laughs> I tell you what, I would be there. awesome. I, you know what? If if I if I'm going to be a diva dad, I <laughs> I got to uh I got to tip my hat out to my homeboy Homero Tamez. Mm-hmm. He uh you know, he doesn't have a a kid on the team, although Jet was with us as well. Jet made the trip. But uh he had a challenge. Now I know you can't say it on the air, but hopefully he challenged, accepted and he Yes, it. yes. We can't we uh <laughs> we'll discuss that off the air. Yes. But we uh <laughs> um it was really fun. And I bring up Romero and Jet I mean it, it, he was really proud of his of his wife, the wonderful coach Rebecca and and just the team and how we deserve to be there. Mm-hmm. I mean, he made that a, a point to say that. And um, we, we really did deserve to be there. And to be honest with you, I would love to see other Washington schools or, or Ellensburg or Cleelum, uh try to get there. You know, you, you do your own thing and, and uh, you got your specialties and stuff. But it was really cool. In fact, on the way home, we traveled with uh, uh, Rogers High School out of, out of okay. Puyallup. They were on the plane with us. And, and, you know, just being on the plane, you get a shout out from the pilot and the, the stewardesses or flight attendants, whatever you want to call them, which is, which is really cool. Hey, uh, in New Jersey, there is a school called Kittatinny. Oh, no way. Kittatass and Kittatinny. Are they the coyotes? Uh, no, they oh. were a blue logo, um, was not coyote oriented. Really, though. No. But they're in New Jersey, same size town and everything. So there's a little bit of camaraderie there. We actually saw them at the airport too. And cool. And uh, but uh, you know, in in non sports things, and hopefully this is not a morbid twist, <laughs> but non sports <laughs> things. If we're in Dallas. I was a couple of blocks away from Dealey Plaza, and for anybody who's a presidential buff like me, that's where you know the JFK assassination oh, was. Yeah. And, um, I tell you what, that was. Uh, trying to think of the word to describe that but sobering yeah. uh interesting um somber whatever whatever uh whatever you want to say uh, um just really it's kind of a bucket list place for me to visit and i'm glad i got to see it and yeah. you know um if those trees could talk sure. um i'd really like to know what they would say but uh anyway but dallas is a awesome awesome city that's awesome i want to go down there i want to see it yeah I want to drive by that stadium you drove by and post a picture of. Looks nice too. Oh yeah, AT and T <laughs> Stadium and and uh, uh, I still call it the, the ballpark at Arlington, and then the brand right. new baseball stadium they're building. Like so, right. it's the old baseball stadium, which is what twenty five years old, yeah. and then the brand new one, which is almost being done, and then Jerry World, which mm-hmm. is just a huge stadium, um, and then right across the, across the street, across the freeway from that is. Or near near that uh, complex is uh, Six Flags over Texas. Oh, sweet! Um, so that whole area is just you know, and if you're going to be in downtown Dallas, get the Lime Bike or whatever you know ride sharing app and just cruise on a Lime Bike or Lime Scooter downtown. It's fun. So, uh, was the last question about this whole thing? Did Jerry have your reserve parking sign? At Jerry World. No. Uh, you know, it, there's spot? miscommunication there. That's so. the crap. Yeah. Figure it out, Dallas. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so we, you know, we, let's move on to our, uh, our Would You Rather. Would You Rather. Been a fun, fun save. I've enjoyed it. I still I've got a few of them on my phone, so Ooh. we'll have to, uh, 
well, we we put the post out last night, and we had a couple, uh, quite a few good ones. And, and you know, go check us out on uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and and YouTube and, ch- and and chat with us. We love having chats on there. And and uh, you know, Andy Bain posted spring training less than a week away, and he's apparently a Dodger fan. Andy is a Dodgers fan, and um, is that a would you rather? No, just Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I can well, give him bad times. I'm friends. Any. <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess. Uh, so, would you rather cheer for the Dodgers or the Giants? The Giants. Uh, I'm kind of. And I Giants. think Andy is going to say the Dodgers. How, the other part, the question I was thinking of is spring training. Would you shorten it or would you keep it as long? And have more more regular season games or? Nah, the same amount. Just have less, a little bit less spring training time. No, I think it's a good the way it is. You know why I like spring training because it's basically a month long, right? Mm-hmm. And. I'm not sure about you, Luke, but I know you've made you personally have made a, a handful of visits down there, yep. and I think it's just you know that your March is, I mean, spring training is now a, it's a travel thing, it's a it's a yeah. family thing, it's a reunion kind of thing. I I like the way it is, man. Me too. Uh, it, honestly, if you're a baseball fan and you haven't gone, you need to go. It is the coolest when you're walking in the middle of this grass patch and here's Griffey walking by. I, yeah. I walked past him leaving the parking lot when I was like, oh, that's great. I, I was speechless. It was pretty cool. <laughs> I fangirled really bad during that moment. But no, it's it's awesome. Spring train's great. It's warm. You just got through February of terrible here. And, yeah. And uh, no, I'll get down there and see it. And, and actually, the, the Dodger fans, they're in Glendale, I believe. And, and we go through the shopping center and they're everywhere. But of not too far are. from Peoria. So there's a few. Okay. Uh, Ty Flynn. I said that wrong probably. I apologize, Ty. Uh, best or worst version of NFL like the the WFL, the USFL, the first XFL, American Alliance Football League, who I believe crashed halfway through the season. Yes, it did. Or the scab football. Um I don't know. Um because they pretty much all just died because of funding, right? Or well, the scab NFL football is when the strikes so, yeah. stopped. I thought that was kind of cool to see your weekend warrior yeah. former athletes going out there and, you know. What year was that? Well, hasn't it been more than one time? Yeah, probably. I don't remember it. Luke really doesn't remember. He probably was Of course, uh, it. I can't re- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I know it happened in the 80s. I do remember that. Oh, and man. Luke, not even, don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, if we're going to talk about scab NFL football, was it ni- 2014 when we had the replacement refs? That won a game for us. Absolutely. Hey, we won it on our own-ish. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. 2012. When 12, that's when it was? It was Russell Wilson's first year when he threw that Hail Mary and Golden State right. caught it. And he caught it. It was not a touchback. It was a touchdown. Yeah. I'm going to go out there and say scab football best. XFL, the first one, and the AAF was the worst. Why was this XFL, XFL the worst for you? I watched it like three times and thought this was stupid. It's back now, right? I think it's going to be a little more. I was more, if uh, if you were a wrestling fan, like the I'm the WWE movie, or yeah, whatever. The, the, the fake wrestling, make yeah. people mad. It is I fake. used to want, I loved it and I watched it all the time. It was more like a wrestling match on a football field. I don't know, I saw one interview and it turned me off of a guy. That, this was kind of weird. Cheerleaders were all right, though. I remember being in like middle school and watching the thing. Dang, that was awesome. Uh, I'll but, say, um, I'll say, scab NFL football as the best, and then I'll say, um, yeah, AAF because it didn't even make the entire season. season. Yeah. What about you, Luke? What about you? I wasn't um, born yet. I, was yeah, I don't even think I have a place in this. So. <laughs> yeah, whatever, whatever. Say. Move on before I start feeling older. You got Josh's up. I like Josh Cox's uh, comment here. Would you rather? Keep Tom Brady, try the free agent market, or draft a QB. I responded to him, Josh, keep him. And then Josh respo- responded with, I'm not sold on that, believe it or not. So, Josh, if I see you at the uh, girls' basketball game uh, tonight in Kittitas, I need you to discuss it with me. Um, you know, I, he's not hurt. He's got an incredible track record. New England loves him. The entire New England area loves. I mean, why get rid of him? Mm-hmm. Forty-three. Keep him. What's it? Hey, I'm forty-three. <laughs> you know, my knee is fifty-eight, but I'm forty-three. <laughs> yeah. I'd and if I, I last time I checked, Tom Brady looked like he was in a little bit better shape than me. But uh, you go. With, I'd say draft a QB. You get like, who? You get like Who's going to be the Tua? I don't know. Trade up. No. 
No. Roll with well, the, I mean, how long are you going to roll the Brady? Pick up Gardner Minshew? <laughs> <laughs> what? He's on his road trip. He's busy. He's back now. His road trip RV. was pretty cool. He returned did the you? RV, yeah. Did you did you see some of the? I mean, I know we're getting off target, but there, awesome. there's two would you rather's right there that I want to discuss. But mm-hmm. I would say keep Tom Brady. Yeah, you got to draft for the future. At some point, he's going to get hurt or just not want to play. But I keep him. He's your guy until I'd go up to him like Tom. What do you want to do? Give me a straight answer now. Yeah, two days. Yeah. Is he really that caliber of a player anymore? I mean, I don't. I mean, we're two years away when he just won a Super Bowl, but. Yeah, he's a guy that took a pay cut so he could get better. Yeah, but not necessarily a pay cut, but a re. Yeah, but he's 43. Sorry, John. (laughs) (laughs) Why do you say sorry and still smile? You could get get a kid two years younger than me, so. Mm, That's a good point. Whatever. Um, I mean, that is a good point. You gotta you gotta think of the future, but he's never been a scrambler. I mean, he's not going to get you yards on the ground. The guy's just a good football player, and his and his he's got a good football mind. But yeah, um, I mean, I'm sure he's. But uh, they just need if they get talent for him. I, I know it hurt not having Gronk, but yeah, yeah. I think Edelman led the league in drops too. <laughs> What's that? I think Edelman led the league in drops or something. Something I heard. Or so that to me doesn't mean it's Tom's fault, though, right? No, that's I said. Just get talent around. Yeah, him. he'll probably be okay. How about the uh, the next one, mm-hmm. uh, Jeff Gay, who I might see at the game as well. So I'll uh, pester him a little bit. Uh, would you rather play for the Seattle Mariners or New York Yankees? Would you rather play for the Seahawks or Patriots? Would you rather drink an old fashioned or tequila sunrise? First uh, thing. What I'm googling old fashioned. It looks like a bourbon. It's delicious. Oh, it's so it, good. Is they it? are delicious. Put it on your list of things to okay. Central devour. Victory tonight. Old fashioned. Someone's buying it for me. Even old fashioned while watching the movie, though, right? Isn't that <laughs> how you celebrated the Western game? Yeah. I've had one at the tab, and it's pretty good. To the tab we go. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll answer old fashioned Mariners and Seahawks. Yeah. Yeah. It's we're, sad. we're going with old fashioned first. Yeah. Because uh, I, I hate tequila. It is. It, it makes me want to throw up right now just talking about it. Uh, Sounds like there's a couple of stories there. Yes. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to say Seahawks because they are good. And I feel such a terrible as a fan because I'm having a hesitation on the Mariners. I don't want to answer that one right now. <laughs> I'm going to say old fashioned, although I will not turn away Tequila Sunrise. I will say the Seahawks. Um, and obviously I'm going to say the, the, the Mariners because I was a junior Mariner when I was a kid in the 80s. But uh, the um, I can understand the mystique of the New York Yankees. Having driven by Yankee Stadium before, it is hallowed grounds, both of them. That's um, kind of got me thinking. So, The last question, we're going to ask the guy when he's in-house. Mr. Phillips, Nate Phillips, Coach Phillips, mm-hmm. some about playoff formats. And yes. There's a big story behind that question that we're not going to tell him. But we'll ask him in person when he's here. I got a good one. What? And it and it does kind of re- goes back to the last question with the Mariners. Would you rather tank a season and get a top overall draft pick, or just miss the playoffs and get a mid round pick? Well, either way, you miss the playoffs, so you might as well tank. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good, solid point. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no. I think I think uh, it, I mean you make a good point of like you're going to miss the playoffs either way in that scenario. But mm-hmm. if you tank a season. It just it kills your fan base. It it absolutely annihilates it, in my opinion. Nobody knows you're tanking it though. But he, I I kind of don't agree with that. I think everybody knows when you're tanking it, don't you think? Uh, it seems like it really doesn't happen. Indianapolis I mean, Colts. There was Kate. I mean, that was a tank job. Suck for luck. Suck for luck. To me, that was so obvious. <laughs> that was pretty bad. I, I but I don't know if it's. I don't know if you can tank in baseball the same way you can tank in in basketball and um, football. Mm -hmm. But uh, I would like to see a team competitive. One, from a fan, it's just more interesting to watch. And two is, I I don't know, if you're in it, if you're still competing for a playoff spot in in September, that's good. Mm -hmm. So that's what, I don't want to tank it. I don't like tank jobs. It's hard for me to say this because the Seattle Mariners have been missing the playoffs for years. And And, and and we've had some... They've already said we're not going to do it this year either. You know what? I made my answer up. Go. Tank, because we missed out on two starters, three starters, 
because we won the last game of the season, we missed out on Cole. Um, there's another one that slipped in my mind right now that pitched in the World Series this year. Strasburg. And actually, we could have had Lincecum at the time, but uh, they, they drafted Brandon Morrow instead. So I'm going to say yep. Tank because we've missed out on some Hall of Famers. The Mariners still might have got rid of them and traded them for someone right. that we will never talk about again. Right. Yeah. Well, that's kind of disappointing. I, this is the first season I'm not – how can I say this? I'm always excited for the Mariners. I love baseball season. I'm so glad it's coming. But I'm just not excited about the Mariners. First, this is the first time I can actually honestly say that. So that means – because they've, they've basically tanked or rebuilt. and But yet, I'm not going to pat myself on the back. I'll let you do it for me. But you basically <laughs> just said you're not going to be an engaged fan. Yeah, because I'll you're not be watching them every day, listening – but it's just it's sad. I mean, we haven't made the playoffs since two thousand one, which <laughs> that's I terrible. Was there. You were there, which I can't wait to get into that story. Yeah, someday. someday. Well, how about we wrap that up? Save some of these questions for uh, I think so next week. Save um, them for next week, guys. It's been enjoyable. Yep. Hopefully, hey, you got a heck of a table here. Hey, thanks. You know that yeah. guy that baited. He's he's an all right cat. Uh, I hope you guys like the new setup. Like I said, if you're listening to us on the podcast on your Spotify, Apple iTunes, or Google podcast, go to YouTube, search Kittitas Valley Sports Talk, click subscribe. We got seven loyal subscribers, a lot more watchers and listeners, uh, but let's get that subscriber list up and, and you'll get to see the new setup. You get to see our fun shirt we put up. That's right. Uh, because kid, or the Wildcats just kicked the crap out of the Western on That's right. Saturday. And, um, yeah, go, uh, go, check out our, go check out our sponsor. Fitters, they're in the corner of 4th and Main. Go buy yourself some furniture. Walk across the street. Get yourself an old-fashioned. That's and right. Grab, and then grab a newspaper. And get a newspaper. And grab a newspaper. <laughs> That's right. Yep. <laughs> hey, Luke. So, uh, guys, thank you for being here. And, and I look forward to the – got a couple exciting weeks coming up here. Sounds good. Yep. So, All right. Well, let's, have a let's, good week, uh, guys. Yeah, be kind to one another and get out there and support your local teams. Take care. <laughs>